Hi, welcome to another episode of Sipnayan Hub. In this video, we will learn of the different data collection methods that are commonly used to research of different designs. Different data sources are also given emphasis through examples. But before we continue, do not forget to like this video, hit the subscription and notification bell to stay updated of future videos. The first method is called direct method. We may popularly know this as interview, which is normally a face-to-face -face conversation with the respondents. During interviews, the interviewer directly records not only the interviewer's responses to a set of questions, but also their behaviors such as their body language and tones. Interviews can be structured, semi-structured, or unstructured. Structured interviews are administered using a prepared set of questions. In terms of depth, it is surface level and is usually completed in a shorter period of time. One advantage, though, is its ability to let a researcher collect his or her data faster and more efficient. Semi-structured interview allows an interviewer a little leeway to explore a subject matter and does not strictly follow a formal list of questions. These questions are more open-ended, allowing for more interaction between the interviewer and the interviewee. For unstructured interview, questions are not necessarily predetermined so that the interviewer has freedom to ask anything that comes to his or her mind. Because of lack of structure, this kind of interview may be time-consuming. Another method, called indirect method, utilizes questionnaires. These are commonly used for survey studies. A standardized set of questions are prepared, printed and administered to people of interest. Questions may range from fixed alternatives like a multiple choice questions, Likert scale, and open-ended questions. Because questionnaires can be reproduced, administration of it can be done to larger group of people. This reduces the cost of a research because data is gathered simultaneously from several people as opposed to interviews as it is being limited to few people only. Moreover, data analysis is easier since the questionnaire is pre-structured according to the objectives of a research. However, because questionnaires are also simply given to the respondents, data gathered may be unreliable because of dishonesty. Also, items have chances of being left unanswered due to lack of interest. This is the reason why the researcher orients the respondents before giving them a questionnaire. Observation is another data collection method best suited for documenting the behaviors of a subject in an uncontrolled environment or controlled environment as for the case of laboratories. Through observation, the researcher examines a phenomenon while it occurs. One advantage of observation includes the directness of the data gathering process. The researcher does not have to ask people of their behavior or other variables under study. Data from observation also appears to be more superior compared to those that are gathered from an artificial environment or from experimentations. At the same time, through observation, nonverbal behaviors or those that the subjects are unconsciously aware of about themselves are captured. In the contrary, observation's main disadvantage is lack of control of the observer when data are affected by extraneous variables or those variables that are not included in the study but are affecting the subjects in some way. Experimentation is another method conducted to explore the causal relationships between or among variables while controlling the effects of other factors in the environment. For example, suppose we are to conduct an experiment to identify which fertilizer would result to the best Pechai yield. Fertilizers are organic, commercial, or mixed. To start the experiment, we prepare plots for planting. Let's say we have four plots, plot 1, plot 2, plot 3, and plot 4. We then assign which fertilizer is applied in each plot.
The first three plots where the fertilizers were applied into are called treatments. The last plot is called the control group because no fertilizer is applied. For experiments like this, observations from control groups serve as a baseline or a starting point for the experiment. In doing an experiment, it is important that the other factors not included in the study are eliminated or controlled. For example, the soil composition of the four plots must be the same. They should be exposed to the same amount of sunlight or receive the same amount of water. We do this because we are only interested in comparing the effects of the varying fertilizers to the growth of Petchai. If we don't do this, then we cannot ascertain that varying growth performance of the Petchai is associated to varying fertilizer applied. To proceed with this experiment, we then plant and observe the Petchai. Experimentations are conducted to human subjects as well. For example, if one wants to test the effectivity of a special study program over the traditional or usual program, a researcher may divide the subjects into two groups. One is the experimental group and the other the control group. The experimental group will be exposed to the special program while the control group in the traditional program. Their performance will be compared after these exposures. Again, it is important for the researcher to control at his very best outside factors that affect students' behaviors or performance. We can gather data either from a primary source or a secondary source. A primary source refers to sources from which a researcher directly and originally gathers the data. When a researcher conducts an interview to people, administer questionnaire, or even observe them in their community, these people become primary data sources. Secondary sources are pre-existing data sources such as research journals, books, the internet, and it also includes agencies that collect and store data like hospitals, the Philippine Statistics Authority, the Department of Agriculture, and the Department of Health. There you have it, your data sources. For more discussion on statistical concepts, I will see you in the next video.